I think it just went up too quickly. Uh, it Bitcoin tripled in a matter of three months, and uh, after hitting the bottom of the bear market around thirty two hundred dollars. So. Uh, anytime you have a parabolic move like that in such a short period of time, you're going to have a pullback. And uh, we're just going to continue seeing that with Bitcoin. Okay, so you expect this is going to happen every time Bitcoin surges, we might see a pullback then? Um, I mean, I'm observing historical facts, right? That's what has happened. Uh, and I expect that to continue to happen because the underlying reasons for why that happens will continue to be in place, which is that uh, we have waves of adoption of Bitcoin. We have waves of people who... Uh, come to understand that Bitcoin's decentralization allows it to have an extreme level of scarcity of only 21 million Bitcoins, which is completely unheard of in any other market. So um, that, that level of scarcity combined with new demand from new users who want to start accumulating Bitcoin uh, means that we're going to continue seeing volatility and momentum traders uh, and the, the bull and bear cycle. You know, we saw something similar back in 2017 as well, Pierre, where right around the consensus conference, we had seen Bitcoin jump to about, I think it was $2,000. And then thereafter, it had a good little period where it continued to rise. Ultimately, we all remember happened, what happened at the end of 2017 as well. Do you think there's any similarity to what we saw in 2017 to what we're seeing here in 2019, just two years later? Yeah, I mean, in, in every case, uh, you know, whether it was 2013, uh, in December of 2013, and April of 2013, and cycles beforehand, uh, it's always the case that the price is just oscillating around Bitcoin's fundamental value. Bitcoin's fundamental value is increasing every day as it continues to do as advertised and as it continues to function as this global censorship resistant uh, final settlement system and uh, maintain its extremely rigorous monetary policy. Um, which is very appealing to people in this day and age where governments are just uh, printing lots of money and we're at, the, we're at the top of the economic cycle and we have calls for rate cuts. So um, clearly also when we hear about politicians debating, a lot of it is about you know, how much more they're going to spend on X, Y, and Z programs. So uh, I think the fiscal and monetary picture is very clear for fiat currencies. They're going to self-destruct at some point, might be you know, in 10 years, might be in 50 years, but um, we know how those experiments finish. Uh, whereas uh, with the sound money like Bitcoin, there's just going to be a lot of demand for it. And it's going to cause momentum traders to uh, come in and out of the market and cause these oscillations. But I think that retail should just be passively accumulating and uh, dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin over a matter of years rather than trying to time the market. Uh, Pierre, we have about a minute left with you. Got to know, do you think Bitcoin's essentially going to become the new gold standard when you look at all the crypto out there? It's just essentially going to be the one that's going to be traded uh, you know, near the top of all of them. We're not going to have Ethereum. We're going to have Litecoin. It's essentially going to be Bitcoin. Well, so, I mean, those are going to continue to exist. But I think that um, from a monetary perspective, uh, historically, what we've seen is there's a convergence on one asset um, because there's a uh, network effect from liquidity. So. Um, because Bitcoin, its monetary policy is fantastic, the credibility of that monetary policy is uh, completely unquestionable. Um, and that's just not the case for a lot of these altcoins that are very centralized. Uh, and obviously, it's even worse for a currency like Libra, uh, which is very centralized and corporate controlled. What's different about right now in the atmosphere? Do you think that we can stabilize around this price for Bitcoin, given the fact that there's uh, you know, seemingly so much more adoption that has at least uh, made its way into the thought of many institutions and, and retail uh, players as well in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies out there? A lot of infrastructure got built during the bear market, and uh, I think that we're seeing some of the results from that. Uh, you know, there's $2 billion of Bitcoin futures that were traded on CME Group over the past 24 hours. Uh, we've seen Bitcoin exchanges have been doing extremely well in terms of volumes. So that's, that's healthy for the ecosystem. I think exchanges have always been the most profitable businesses. Uh, and I think that they're just uh, benefiting from, you know, Fidelity has uh, released their custody product and we'll continue to see more uh, high net worth individual and uh, eventually fully institutional uh, demand for Bitcoin. Uh, Pierre, very quickly, what does this volatility mean for Facebook's uh, crypto hearing that they have on July the 17th? Does that essentially mean regulation? Is it almost inevitable at this point? So I think that uh, what will emerge is a contrast between uh, Libra's model and Bitcoin's where uh, Congress can't uh, have someone come and you know speak for uh, Bitcoin. Uh, they can't shut down Bitcoin. They can't censor Bitcoin. Um, whereas with Libra, they can tell Facebook to stop, right? They, and they can uh, stop Libra from ever becoming a thing. 
Um, so I think that just highlights the advantage of being decentralized, and uh, Bitcoin will continue to uh, shine in that regard.